often scoffed at, the Sega CD is a fairly underrated system with a surprisingly deep library of games spanning a wide variety of genres. On a previous episode of 5 Games, I took a look at 5 great Sega CD games, but on today's episode, we're going to take a look at the next layer of games. The following titles may not represent the cream of the Sega CD crop, but they are all solid games in their own right. So with that, I present 5 good games for the Sega CD. Soul Feast is a shmup developed by Wolf Team and released during the launch of the system. The opening cinematic shows off some of the additional hardware capabilities of the Sega CD. There is some high quality music, complete with voice acting, and some razor sharp animated sequences. The actual gameplay itself is pretty solid. Per usual, you are humanity's last hope for survival, and success is dependent on your ability to fly a ship, dodge bullets, and destroy enemies. Your ability to alter your cannons is the game's main hook. If you stop firing, pressing up, down, left, or right will alter the angle of your weapons, changing them from a spread style shot to something more focused. Your ability to change this on the fly is fun, letting you tweak your strategies with each playthrough. Graphically, the game is a bit subdued. Nothing here really wows or impresses me like the best shooters on the system. However, the contrast is excellent and enemies and bullets are always easy to keep track of. I do wish the backgrounds had a bit more detail and the enemy patterns a bit more interesting, but there's really nothing wrong here at all. If you're looking for a reasonably priced, competent shooter with a great CD soundtrack, Solfees fits the bill. What an ugly bunch! The nastiest batch of criminals in the world, and New York's got them. Lucky thing, they've also got Spider-Man. The Amazing Spider-Man vs. The Kingpin is a side-scrolling action game starring everyone's favorite web-slinging hero. As one would expect, there is plenty of hand-drawn FMV, complete with above-average voice acting and a decent plot. Per usual, the public has turned on Spider-Man, and it's up to us to win back their trust. While FMV is to be expected, the terrific controls are a total surprise. Swinging across the city slinging webs is a blast, and the combat is solid too. The punches and kicks are quick and responsive, and Spider-Man moves surprisingly brisk, even up walls and on ceilings. The game has you browsing a map of New York City, locating bosses and then traversing a stage to take on the boss. These bosses aren't just generic baddies, but real villains from the Marvel Universe. Upon defeat, you get to watch some cutscenes, collect a key, and move on to the next target. Unfortunately, the levels don't quite match the epic rock soundtrack or smooth controls. Set pieces are fairly generic and lacking in detail. This doesn't prevent the game from being fun, I just wish the levels were more interesting. Don't let this detract you though, The Amazing Spider-Man vs. The Kingpin is one of the better comic book video games from the 16-bit era and a must-own on the system. Speaking of comic book games, we enter the DC Universe with Batman Returns. This is a tale of two games. Part 1 is a generic action game with stiff jumping, clumsy controls, frustrating enemy placement, and questionable hit detection. There is no doubt it captures the dark mood of the film, from the gritty gothic settings to the awesome music arrangements. I just don't find the platforming bits to be an engaging experience. Thankfully, there are the famous driving levels. These two are brutal, requiring plenty of memorization and an aggressive style to beat the timer, but they are actually a ton of fun. The driving controls are responsive, and launching rockets at enemies and bosses is as satisfying as one could hope. And man, are these gorgeous. The scaling is exceptionally smooth, and something just not seen outside the arcades at the time. Everything zips by at a rapid pace, and the entire experience is really quite stunning. If Sega had focused more time and energy squeezing this kind of performance out of the Sega CD, perhaps the system wouldn't have the spotty reputation it has today. The awesome soundtrack and fun vehicular combat more than make up for the thankfully skippable action sequences. Another must own. Yeah. <laughs> 
Sylphid has some of my favorite FMV of any Sega CD game. The soundtrack has an almost Halo-like quality to it, and the flat shaded visual style matches the time period and the system limitations perfectly. This of course is another shmup, and a highly regarded one in some circles. The gameplay doesn't take place on a flat plane, but rather has some depth to it. Things in the distance are small and move slower than objects in the foreground. It can be a bit disorienting at first, but fits the overall 3D aesthetic. Underneath all the technical wizardry is a good game. In many ways, this plays more like a classic shooter from the 80s than something from the 90s. Enemy patterns are simple, as are your weapons, and the game focuses more on twitch reactions than memorization. Still, weapon upgrades are available between levels, keeping the game fresh from stage to stage. It lacks the depth of something like Musha, but is fun nonetheless. The detailed backgrounds and high-energy soundtrack are both things that couldn't be done on lesser systems, and do a terrific job utilizing the Sega CD hardware. It's pretty, it sounds great, and is easy to recommend. Yo, what's up? I'm looking for a man called The Jake. Last, but certainly not least, is Rise of the Dragon. This is a point-and-click adventure, taking advantage of the Sega CD hardware with plenty of detailed screens and a ton of high-quality voice acting. The voice acting is easily the highlight of the game, with the main character rivaling many modern movies. The rest of the cast is alright too, in a B-movie sort of way, but it makes for an engaging experience. You play the role of Blade Hunter and have to solve the mysterious murder of the mayor's daughter. Clicking on everything, paying attention to clues, managing items, not saying the wrong thing, and solving puzzles is the name of the game here. Rise of the Dragon will let you screw yourself fairly easily, so if you're new to the genre, you might want to seek the assistance of a guide. In addition to the interesting story is the overall neo-noir vibe. Blade Runner influences are found all over, from hovering cars, an abundance of neon, and even our main hero's wardrobe. My favorite part is just the mature feeling of the adventure. From drug use to sexuality, it is hard to believe this came out in 1993 and still feels rather fresh. If you refuse to shell out $400 for Snatcher, Rise of the Dragon just might do the trick. So, there you have it. Five good games released for the Sega CD. Now, this is not a definitive list, nor is it intended to be a best of. And the Sega CD has far more than five good games, so be sure to leave a comment and let me know which games you enjoy.